my name's Graham Grave. I'm the uh, product director, project lead, and well, initiator of the FIRE project. It's my pleasure to be here with IHE today to, um, you know, help kick off the IHE Connectathon, and to, for me, to further build the strengthen our relationship between IHE and HL7. I want to start by telling you that, for me, this is a really personal job, a really personal passion. You know, all of us know that the healthcare system has gaps in it. But my experience with my family, with my friends, is that those gaps are actually chasms that people fall into as they transition across the healthcare system. And they, they're so big that they can't get out. And, and I talk to them and they tell me how their health is going. And I realize that they don't even know they're in a gap chasm but they can't get out of it and it's really changing their lives and affecting their health and their well-being and i don't want that to happen for my family and and i'm sure you're the same and, and so this is a very personal um mission that we're passionate about it's a wonderful thing for me to have a job that connects to my passion like that of course you know it does mean that we're very passionate about our motivations and our values and sometimes they're not quite the same in the details and so that makes what we do at times challenging but nevertheless for me it's a really big deal that I can do this and I thank you for your part in contributing to us the overall solution to make all of our lives better and it's not like what we do is easy at all and and it's as I've spent, I don't know, maybe 20 years now working in the um, uh, space of healthcare IT standards, I've, I've come to realize that, that really there's a very much a three-step process that we have to work with and have to go through. And that three-step process is challenging. The first leg of the process, as it were, is um, actually creating and defining the raw platform standards and building the technical standards that everybody can build off. And the next step that follows is taking those standards and adapting them to a particular context of use, a smaller community, a more focused technical problem, a um, different, you know, a particular jurisdiction and, and, adapting the standard and, and applying extra additional rules. And then finally, the third step is to actually turn those additional agreements because that's all standards are. It's just a community that agrees about how something we're going to do, how we're going to do something and actually driving that into the market, actually making the agreements working production systems. Now, that's that's a difficult you know it's a difficult thing to have that three-step process and it's possible that we could try eliminating two steps and two of the steps and just have one say well, we're just going to write a standard that's fit for purpose for a single use the trouble is that there's hundred thousand uses all fractionally differentiated and and we we don't have the capacity amongst the standards developers or the implementers to not reuse solutions and, and a solution where you have fit for purpose standards for 100,000 variations of similar problems, or 100,000 standards, it's just, just not gonna scale. So we have to have the platform standard that's adaptable, but then we need the adap adaptations to actually take place. The differences are have, they're gonna come up somewhere, they're gonna emerge, and we have to have a process for dealing with them. Now in, in the fire project, people often say to me, but, but we don't have enough control over the adaptation process. The, the, the people are going off in different directions and solving the same problem differently. And, and that's certainly a challenge that we don't want to have. But at the same time, people are solving slightly different problems slightly differently. And that is something we absolutely need. And, and so it's a real challenge for us to, to figure out how to manage that process, to have not to have differences we shouldn't have, but to have differences we should have. And that, that is the art of healthcare standardization. Now, inevitably, in those three legs that I described, 
they're kind of clearly differentiated in principle, but in practice, in practice, they're, there's big gray zones between them. What's the new standard? What's an adaptation of existing standard? Is fire just an adaptation of JSON and HTTP and Snowman and others? There's no clear definition to that. And, and so there's no clear differentiation between the three legs. And, and if you look at history, you'll see that HL7 traditionally focuses at the first leg and IAG traditionally focuses on the second, but well, the relationship between us is at times challenging. Now in some kind of theoretical world, I've always thought that we shouldn't have HL7 and IAG as separate organizations. It's a disappointing accident of historical things that happened, which some of which I saw and and that's just, that's how it works because the gray zones um, are gaps that we can fall into, chasms we can't get out of. But you know, we are where we are. We can't change history. All we can do is say the different legs call for different processes and different procedures, different kind of interests and values. And we understand that there's going to be challenges between us. And those differences I talked about have to emerge somewhere. And, and if we draw a line in the sand between two organizations, then the differences will just get attracted to that, to that place. And, and so then we will have challenges. So inevitably, um, if, we, if we pretend that we only have one organization, we just remove the deck chairs around. So, so we are where we are and our challenge is to make the best use of the people, the, the procedures, the resources that we have because I don't think we're solving different problems. I think we're taking on different parts of the problem space of the same problem. And, and so it's our call to collaborate together and to do that as well as we can, knowing that all of us are resource constrained one way or another. And, and this is a practical question because a lot of people ask, what, who should be testing what implement, what specifications, what problems, belong at HL7 and what problems belong at IG. And there's, there's no single answer to that. There, can, there can never can be. And yet procedurally people like a clear demarcation. And, and so that creates ongoing challenges for us. You know, people, we work up specifications in HL7. We're doing the platform development. We're trying to do that first leg. But what happens is as the solution matures, um, the platform mature is people start spinning off adaptations and they're working within the HL7 process, the HL7 community, and, and then they go and create an HL7 derived process that works really well when we're trialing stuff. HL7 connectathons and HL7 processes are geared around earlier stages of development and, and um, platform development. Whereas IAG processes are appropriate and geared towards the later stages of demonstrating success rather than finding problems. Um, I mean, those things both, don't both happen, but it's a matter of focus and, and values. And so where, where does testing belong? And there's no single answer to that, but HL7 kind of is more called to testing the validity of the platform Whereas IAT focuses on testing the, um, verifying the implementations that they'll actually work. Again, gray zones, right? There's no simple handover. So some people have, you know, people come to me and say, well, we, we developed this in HL7, we have our process, we have our community, it's all working in HL7. So can we just keep, you know, keep working towards the end goal in HL7 and just do the testing in HL7? But why would HL7 be better at that than IAG would be? All of, both of us are carried, held back by our legacy and our procedures and our limited ability to do development, but, but why would HL7 be better than IAG? IAG's got the skills and the experience and, and perhaps overheads and processes that they inherited that might not be quite adapted to purpose. And there's always that, you know, that tension, that trade-off in, in IT between sticking with what you have with its overhead or starting again with that overhead of starting again and getting something fit for purpose, for one purpose. It's a theme that runs through all our work.
I think for me, what that is, is a call to both organizations to say, how do we run with less overhead while still keeping and protecting the things that we value from our past? And, and both organizations have things to keep in value and they have overheads they need to get rid of. It's the art of managing those kind of organizations, which is an ongoing discovery process for me and others. And, and it's, you know, we meet regularly between our leaderships to, um, to try and develop and understand that process better and get better at it. Um, for me, I don't want to see um, HL7 try and reproduce IHE's core skills. And I don't want to see IHG try and reproduce HL7's core skills. I want us to see us working together. And so really thank you, Amit, for inviting me to, to give this keynote to talk to all you all at the IHG Connectathon, because our mission in life is actually to make IHG better. Um, but because but that's just a proxy for our real mission, which is to make people's health better. So I've been looking at the IAG Connectathon and, and you're about to start testing. You have specific IAG um, implementation guides to test, both fire and non-fire. That's fine, non-fire is all good. Um, but but I particularly wanted to look at the, the three tracks and call them out and say, global health, local health, personal health. It's this one thing we've learned in the last year is that they're not really very different. They're not in terms of impact on people's health, they're thoroughly overlapping. Uh, something that happened on the other side of the world changed our personal health. And, and our personal health is a primary input to our public health. There's no um, public health without personal health or vice versa. I think those tracks and, and trying to get an integration across all of those spaces i think that's really important and i'm really pleased that this these tracks are happening um i know that many of the people that i work with in our very many communities i work with are very you know deeply involved in those tracks i'm looking forward to trying to participate a little bit in those myself um and so i'm really i'm really thrilled um to be um here uh helping out uh, getting this going go back to my original thing this is personal this is a passion for me and for us and it's the call for action and you know you, you might have heard the mantra to think global and act local but I kind of think it's the other way around for us that we need to act globally because we're thinking locally and we're thinking really locally like I said family right but our family's health depends on the globe depends on the health IT infrastructure that we all share depends on a lot of things around the world. But for us working on health IT infrastructure, it's really a case of think global, think local, but act globally. Because what we know is healthcare IT safeguards the economy, powers the economy and makes our lives better. So good luck this week with the IG Connectathon. I look forward to seeing you around. And thanks again, IG, for inviting me to do this.